All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for the second map. For those of you just sitting down here live in the venue, this is the World Cyber Games 2007 PGS versus Rocket in the second map. First one won by Team Finland, 16 to 14 on DE Train. Let's quickly look at the roster rundown on the T side. We're going to have Lord, Neo, Taz, Luke, and Kumin. This is for PGS. And for the Finnish Team Rocket, we have Ruiz, Conte, Tinti, Plaste, and Nasu. As Pistol Round is going to be underway, I am Van Sill. Along with me is DJ Rome. We are GGL Wired. As we got the bomb carried so far by Lord. I think they're split up right now to try to work towards the upper bomb side. Conte is set up with Ruiz. Try to hold things down. Plaste on the outside. Side, Nasu looking at the ramp room and Tinti in the back of the ramp. Let's see what's gonna happen. Taz speaking first. We're gonna have an El Mano to El Mano combat inside the ramp. So far, nothing as of yet. He's just gonna play the crossfire game. Flashes inside. Nasu opening things up. We're all tied on four on four situation now as Tinti falls in the hands of Luke. Bomb in the hand of Lord. Gonna make his way towards the lower bomb site. Kuma is gonna try to hold back Rocket under the bon bottom of the ladder. As now we're gonna push in by Team Rocket. We're setting up the crossfire. Lord B onto Ruid. Luke then onto Plaste, so he did commit towards the lower bomb site, which is faked it, went back up, and then we went up the ladder and picked off Conte. And that is going to be the first round for Team, uh, should I say, for Team PGS, sorry, with a one to nothing score. You know what? It's 1 0 for PGS, and they need this because they had a good shot at uh, get, hitting a tie in the first map, so they've got to be upset about that. It's good to see them come out and get a pistol round under their belt here sure. and, and get themselves a bit of an advantage so they can feel better about their performance here. I'm sure they were disappointed with their performance in the first map, and they look to redeem themselves here. Uh, so let's see, how they, uh, let's see how they react here. With the pistol round victory, Taz was the bomb carry. He's going to drop it right outside the squeaky door, peek outside uh, towards the ramp area. Galil in hand for him. There was a grenade that came around the corner. As you can see by the overhead map, all of the Terrace uh, Neo is the only one outside, the rest of them inside. And Taz on point here, still looking real hard at that rent room, wants to be able to pick him off. Oh, CT peeked around the corner there, he had a shot at him. Was unable to get any sort of entry frag here, and he's peeking over the box right there, trying to spam a couple grenades up there. There's another CT in there, that was Tinty managing to get the pistol frag. Two T players now stuck outside as all the fireworks taking place in the ramp room on top. Now Lord B inside the main site right there. Plastic nice. cross map gets wow. three frags in a <laughs> row from the backside. And that leaves only Kubin left. Let's get a lock on him. First person mode right here. And uh, he is cruising around inside trying to be as silent as possible. He's going to pick that bomb up and head towards the ramp area yet again. There are all five CT players up, so he's got a long road to hoe here. As he's finally hitting the ramp, no CTs are around. They're all in the upper side, it appears. So he might be able to slide downstairs. Kuban gets a nice headshot frag on the entry to the lower side. There's one more CT there. He's totally got a shot on him. Why isn't he taking it? I don't know. But he did get a frag on Ruid. Tinti's going to peek back around with the Galil and drop him down low. And the CTs will take the tally. Was it just too dark for him to see that guy on the ladder or what? <laughs> Actually, what, what was going on for the guys in the ladder room is um, I think the one that was peeking down was just jumping up and down on that ladder, waiting for his teammate to move on the, down the ladder on the other side uh, of the other vent at the same time so they could double peek um, that last member of Pentagram to pick him off and get that round. And indeed they did, uh, indeed they did, and it worked out. And Rocket actually Eco Cobra, uh, PGS, great round by Plastic, just holding inside that wolf area at the upper bomb site. Great shooting with that Deagle, evening things up, but it looks like PGS is gonna go for another buy. So uh, this is actually rather interesting. Let's see what's gonna happen. It's a mixed buy. We're opening things up inside the Ram Room area for PGS. And I think this time we're just not gonna go for the fake. We're gonna go towards the lower bomb site. Get that bomb plan down for uh, reassuring uh, the money here. But we actually had Nasu in the bottom of the site. He picked off Neo, then finally got killed by Luke. And then I think we had one guy inside the vents as well. Indeed, we had Plastic who went back up. He's gonna try to go back down the other vent. And he did, and he picks off Luke. And the bomb is now dropped. Lord, only nine HP. This is not looking good for PGS at all. He's running back towards the lower side, picks up the bomb. 50 seconds left on the clock. He still has plenty of time to attempt to go back towards the upper side if he wants to. As Plastic then would just let him go back up. 
the upper side, go back down the other vent. So he's going to try to pick him off from there. Lord now walking up on that catwalk in the lower bomb side. He's going to try to move up towards the vent and find towards the upper side. He spotted Conte inside the, the window room. He picks him off there at the bottom of the staircase as a sliding door, should I say. Now he opens it. As soon as he opens the sliding door after planting the bomb, Plaste moved in, picked him off with the Deagle, and goes for the defuse. Almost a nice gamble there by PGS. But uh, to no avail, Plaste was still uh, won that round on the clutch situation, one versus one. And uh, with the bomb plan, though, I'm not sure if PGS is going to go for the buy, maybe a Deagle save. All right, Plaste is having a good couple of rounds there. As he's leading the scoreboard for his team with nine frags in three rounds. That's not uh, that's not bad at all, brother. Um, let's check it out and see how it shakes down here in the fourth round. See what uh, kind of weapons we see coming out. We got a Plaste couple Deagles here on the uh, terrorist side and uh, the CTs Let's see what they got M4s in hand so they got a, a pretty serious buy here looks like the terrorists are on some sort of save check out the overview here for the setup looks like the CTs spread out nicely and all the terrorists locked in next to the squeaky door here Let's drop it in bomb carrier Taz right above the squeaky door entrance uh, they are looking towards the ramp area more than anything though that's going to try to create some sort of distraction in the squeaky door room upstairs. And they are shopping that area very heavily. It looks like they do want to make the insertion into the upper site. And I'm afraid that CTs are ready. But first frag coming in from Neo. Plastic gets an HE frag on Luke, though. And now it's four on four. Nasu outside with a uh, FAMAS. Plastic inside with the M4. Spamming the wall a little bit. And he's got the lockdown on that squeaky door. Now Bomb makes it way to the lower site. Two terrorists are there. Bomb plant does go down. Let's see how the CTs react. Taz gets a deagle shot on Conti. Conti goes down. And now it's four on three. Terrorists have four men up. Kubin with a frag on Ruit. Nasu and Plaste answer back with two, though. And that's going to be even Steven here. Two players apiece on either side. Plaste defending the bomb, uh, the bomb diffuser right now. And he does get the uh, does get the frag on Neo. Nice. Nasu finishes off the last player with a headshot as well as getting the defuse. Nice play by the terrorists in the middle of the map. I'm surprised there. For the second time where they were supposed to save, they've actually gambled with another buy. We had two guys purchase AK-47s, a couple of them with deagles, and tried to work towards the ram room. They got the plan once again, and this time I see another buy coming in from PGS. Last man standing was Taz on that 2v1, but he was just too far. He was actually in a dead room at the lower bomb site. Tried to go through the vents and try to prevent... Uh, Rocket from defusing that bomb towards the lower side, but it didn't pay off. Nice pick off early in the round, though, by BGS at the upper side. Ruit falls down and just saw blood flying, flying down towards that ladder. So we got an early pile on four situation in favor of the Polish team. Bomb in the hands of Lord. We've got two guys on the outside, three guys inside the lobby room. And now it's going to be slow play until Neo drops Conte on the outside from the garage. Let's see what's going to happen. Kuban's going to open that sliding, the squeaky door, should I say. Luke, a drop by Nasu on the outside. Are we going to come in soon towards the upper bomb site? Uh, not sure because Nazo just dropped the people on the outside. Blast they rooted just by the hut area, got the kill onto Kubin. So the last two guys decides to say, hey, we're going to try to work towards the ramp. The Tinti is winning right there. Just the first one, finally retaliated by Lord. Bomb carry now making his way down towards the lower bomb site. No, he's just going to hold it down uh, for a uh, tad bit. It is himself, Lord B from PGS against Plaste and Nasu from Team Rocket, who is now moving up towards the top of the ladder. Committing inside the upper bomb site. He doesn't see anybody as of yet. Plaste inside the fence. Nasu on the outside, small garage, small entrance to the upper bomb site. Lord B is probably going to decide to drop, but if he drops down, he might get hurt here by Nasu. That's why he's just holding just on the small garage. We hear some footsteps, so Nasu is going to call it for his teammate to rotate. We got the bomb carrier Lord that dropped down, plants the bomb. Nasu just didn't spam behind the box, so he's just going to wait for him to peek out. First bad flash, second bad flash, but none the, nonetheless, he still gets the kill onto Lord with a nice headshot there from the AK. And Plastic is going to go for that defuse. And Rocket is going to score this a 4 1 overall over the Polish team as we're still in the first half of D Nuke. All right, 4 1's the score here with Rocket stealing away a lot of rounds here. PGS only taking the first round. And they dropped all four subsequent rounds. Now they need to start thinking about picking up some rounds here. Or else they're going to be in dire straits, uh, Vans. I'm, I'm really worried about uh, 
the, the momentum here. PGS really needed to start off hot, and I thought they had it with that pistol round victory, and now I'm not so sure. So let's see how it shakes down here in the sixth round. Luke is the bomb carrier floating for a quick insertion right through the squeaky door there. Titi opens things up, but Kuban B answers right back. Four on four now as the bomb goes down in the upper side. Conti and Nasu on the scene on the front side. Neo drops Nasu, though. Conti gets a frag on Lord B inside. Now it's three on three. Kuban B has a lockdown on the squeaky door. Conti in the ladder area. Kuban oh, B man. makes his entry into the site there. And a quick wow. defuse by the CTs. Uh, I don't think the terrorists were there uh, ready ready to fire on that one. Nice job sneaking in for the quick defuse by the CT. What a great takeover strat there by Team Rocket. As uh, they actually had two guys with the closest spawn. Instead of dropping from the upper ladder, they went down the ramp room. And then uh, down towards the lower site to open the vents. And then just move up towards the upper side from there. And then as soon as you're able to pick off and clear up the, the floor while PGS was looking for some cover inside the, the ladder room, or should I say the lobby, the rest of the rocket has to move up towards that ladder, set up on the defense, preventing PGS from moving out there from the squeaky door and the hut, and got the ninja defused as PGS are still alive at the end of that round. So far, though, that's going to not look good for PGS. I think they were on a save trying just to rush towards the upper side and get a bomb plant down. That save round that Rocket won against PGS on that second round just really uh, hurt PGS's money situation, the, the way that they're going to control the, the rest of the game. So this is why we're seeing a, dom a domination by Rocket so far. But at least PGS saved that last round. They're going to come with a full buy this time. Hopefully we'll be able to come back in this game, but it's the CT side of the map once again on Nuke. All right, Rocket with a major advantage here. Five rounds to their credit ahead. And we're in the uh, eighth round in the first half. Looks like the T's going to slow things around. Uh, Neo's going to take it around the outside. Luke just inside right there. Taz is going to get the first frag, though, on Tinty. And Luke makes his way down the ladder inside right next to the squeaky door. Now he's going to meet his buddies. Smoke's on the inside of the site here, and you can see flashes coming in as well. I think Luke might be flashed right now. You can see the CTs right outside of that entryway. And let's see who gets the entry frags. If it's going to happen. <laughs> it's a very slow play. I think they're trying to pick off here to see if Rocket's going to play aggressively. But uh, Neo's going to get the first pick here from uh, the flank. Yep, Neo gets a frag, and that's their cue. Lord B chimes in with a headshot on Conti as well. Now through the squeaky door they go. There is a CT member up top, but the quick bomb plant at the uh, upper side there goes down. Nasu gets a frag on Taz. And Ruit with a frag as well. So now it's uh, three on two here. T's have most guys up. And the terrorists will finish things off. Lord B and Kubid B both getting frags in on that round. And that's going to be the second round tally for PGS. And uh, they're in business, I think. If I'm not mistaken, Neo was the one that got the first frag on the outside. And then uh, Rocket just let him uh, play around on the outside which uh, gave the advantage for Neo to just flank around on the top of that ladder. They actually tried to set up to prevent Neo from uh, flanking by moving out towards that ladder by having one guy on the top of the hut just overlooking that, that uh, spot. But uh, Neo just had the upper hand there with uh, a quick shot and uh, picked off and cleared up the upper side. So that's the advantage for PGS. This round is going to be rocket. Should be on a save there because I see a bunch of people on the overhead view just pushing inside the lobby room. Nasu finally opens up with uh, a kill. Plasse one with one as well. And Nasu is going to be the last one remaining here inside the squeaky door. Runs inside the lobby area, picked up that AK, headshot at Kubin, but finally gets killed by Luke uh, as he was moving back inside the radio room. So uh, a decent save there by Rocky with three frags uh, on that uh, save, but still a round that goes to Team uh, PGS. You know, I'm going to have to give props to Taz here who likes to mix up the tempo, and I really think it's the biggest advantage that PGS has. When they rush in or they just completely bring the game to a grinding halt, that shows that they are in control of the tempo of the game. And that goes to their credit a lot of the time. Now, this round, uh, this will be the 10th round in uh, the second map here. Taz is the bomb carrier this time. Looks like he's going to come in uh, on point, and he was looking towards that ramp room. Going to flash his way in there. He might have just gotten flashed. HG flying in as well. And Taz might decide to back off here. Might have been called back over to the upper side now. He's going to try to peek out. He does have the bomb in hand, so he's the, uh, he's the guy with uh, the most pressure on right now. And he's going to wait for some other guys to come out. Now he's going to flash, making the entry into the site. Now bad aim from Taz. Going to send him back, and his Ruit gets a nice. hat trick. Three frags in a row. Neil finally takes him down. And there's plenty of action taking place up top. Still four CTs in that upper site, and the bomb is down on the ground in that site. 
CTs will take the round as Tinty gets the final frag on Lord B and is 7-3. to three. Another interesting strat there coming in by the Finnish team by like pushing uh, four guys inside the ram room just nading alternately as we see nothing but nades going inside the radio room. That hurt actually two guys from Team BGS putting them at low health and seeing all those nades they tried to commit towards the upper side but the guys that were nading inside the ram room once again went down lower and through the vents and, and just uh, tried to pick off BGS but they didn't need to because Rui was just up there by himself uh, holding it down against three guys of BGS before he gets picked off. And that was a nice round there by the Finnish team. This round looks like it's going to be a save for the PGS team, if I'm not mistaken. Let's look at Lord B with only a Glock inside of the lobby area. Neo on the outside just jumped all over the place uh, onto the big rock, then onto the top roof of the small garage, but then killed by Conte on the garage uh, from the big garage. So the last three guys are waiting for PGS trying to come in inside the Ram Room area. One and two down. It's all up to Luke. That picks up the M4, switches to the Deagle, and gets picked by Nasu with the flank from the lobby room. And that's going to be another round for Team Rocket. Eight to three is our score overall. Still in the first half with Rocket winning the first map over PGS 16 to 14. So PGS is in a tight situation. Yeah, I mean, PGS has the ability to change tempo of the game. But you know what? There's no substitute for superior aim there, Vans. And the shooting just better. From yeah. the Finns. I mean, honestly, I, I think that's what's winning it for them is when it's a 1v1 situation, the Finns take it more often than not. You know, that's what I heard, too. A lot of the people that have been uh, spectating the tournament area here at the World Star Games have been seeing that PGS uh, were, are not at their top performance that they're usually at. And, uh, you know, we saw that with the score results, them losing to the Virtus Pro Pug with the two guys from Team Forze. So PGS really needs to bring it up. And uh, Nasu now, with, I guess we got a miss by. He bought an auto sniper. I think he's going to try to word that or inside the rent room spam or towards the outside spam. We'll see what's going to happen. But like I said, PGS really needs to bring their A game up because uh, this is it. If they lose this map, they're actually eliminated from the tournament of 1.6. And that's going to be the top two teams that people predicted in the funnels that's going to be knocked out. Wow. Okay, Blinken, you'll miss the 12th round as that went quickly to the CTs. Without remorse, we're going to take it into the 13th round now as it looks like they're going to make a rush towards the lower ramp. Coffee with two huge frags outside after Luke opens things up. Now it's a four-on-three situation. CTs have the advantage. Terrace have control of the ramp room headed towards the lower side, but they are watching their backs. You can see Nasu with the auto sniper uh, watching the lower side, actually. Uh, Plasty next to the ladders. Connie outside. Ruit at the top side of the ladders as well. Lord B with the deagle in hand. Is in the uh, middle of the ramp room. And they are going to silently make their way into the lower site. Let's take a look at the lower site down low here. And uh, there's really nothing going on from the CT perspective. But Nasu finally gets the auto sniper frag of Lord B. So he makes use of that gun that he accidentally bought. Plasty with a frag as well. That's going to leave only Luke left. Thankfully, he has the bomb and a chance, but Nasu is going to quell that immediately with the auto sniper yet again. Vance, I think it came in handy. Yeah, I think he's actually going to keep it for this round as well until he actually dies because sitting 10 rounds, it's comfortable, but, you know, he might turn up against him. I would I would buy a different gun because I just totally suck with the uh, auto sniper. But I guess that's why I'm just casting the game and not playing the match. But 10-3 to 3 is our score in favor of the finish team over PGS. Let's see what PGS is going to attempt to do. Once again, that last round was a mixed buy with AKs and Deagles, but it didn't pay off. We didn't even get the bomb plan towards the lower site. PGS is not looking good in the money situation. Looks like they should be supposed to save this round. Auto sniper coming in by Nasu once again as uh, Tinti sweeps up with two. And uh, they were trying to push out towards that squeaky door. It failed. Run back towards the ramp. They're blocked once again. So moving on to the last round of the first half. 11-3 score in favor of the Finnish team over Team PGS. You know, there's been a couple of amazingly quick uh, rounds there, fans. You can yeah. see every time that PGS squad runs in with anything other than a full buy, they are quickly outclassed right now, and that has to do with the scoreboard, the money situation, of course. However, you would think that they would be able to pull something out. A team that plays at the level that PGS is supposed to play at needs to start pulling pulling some rounds out on the save. They haven't been able to do it against this finished squad at all, so props to the Finns for having great aim and shooting well, as well as managing the money in a superior rate. Lord B now going to drop the bomb outside the squeaky door. He's going to peek towards the ramp. CT player did take some shots, but nobody connected there. Now two team members in that ramp room. Looks like Luke is going to get Ruit, who was in the ramp room. Luke with a second frag on Connie as well. Now it's five on three as Nasu is outside. There's only two CT members upstairs in the main room there. And Lord B is finally going to make a move 
towards the bottom and pick it up. Plasti does get w the first frag for the CT, so now it is a four on three. As Kuba B gets another frag, four on two now. Lord B is going to move up and get that plant. I'm sorry, it's three on two now. Tinty is in the sight. Uh, downstairs, he's going to take it over to the ladder and try to make it up, uh, so let's keep our eye on him. Neo drops the only other CT player that was up. That was Nasu. Kuban B was waiting for Tinti at the top side of the ladder, and GH's are exchanged. 11-4 to four is the score in the first half here of the second map, and you know what? The Finns are looking great right now, Vance. Yeah, for sure, but PGS at four rounds on T's side. That is not so great, but yet not so bad. Um, now are they going to have the easier side on the CT? And I'm, I'm hoping that they're going to be able to win this pistol round. I'm crossing my fingers for them because they are one of the favorite teams to win this one. With Fnatic didn't even make the single elimination bracket, I think a lot of people are hopping on the PGS train now and are hoping for them to make it to the finals. But <laughs> the, fin the Finns are actually showing tremendous great uh, gameplay. They're just dominating the PGS team so far with anything they could do towards that um, towards the defense but now on the offensive i'm just going to talk the action because we had four guys push out towards that squeaky door and we've overpowered the upper side already as pgs is nowhere to be found finally one guy moving up towards that ladder it's going to be lord b dropping one and two onto tinti and nasu we're now setting up on a d looking for some cover content blaster and ruid from P uh, from rocket sorry are trying to hold things back it's all up to content the last man standing on a three versus one taz neon kuman trying to uh, keep things alive now content is inside that hunt with only a block He's going to peek out. Nice. nice. Just the diffuser. Now he's going to make it a two-on-one. Yeah. Can he pull it again? No. It. We're going to have a meat shield happening. Wow. And Neo's going to pick him off. Kuma with no kick is going to defuse this one uh, pretty easily because he actually started to defuse before the timer started ticking faster. So PGS wins that piston round, but a nice attempt there uh, by a Rocket to try to stay alive. Yeah, you know what, Vance? I, I think PGS needs to be concerned at how close that was in the pistol round. I for mean, sure. you would think that you would think that it would be a little bit easier for them uh, to make something happen on the CT side. Uh, seeing as how they had such a rough time on the T side, but uh, props to the Finns for making it a game and coming up close there. Let's see how it happens in the second round now. Ruin bomb carrier for the Finns. Everybody is looking real hard at this hut into the upper bomb site. Terrace are on the save, so it could be a mow down situation here. Luke and Kuban B and Neo with plenty of frags, and the FAMAS is coming out uh, from the CTs, coming nice and handy and uh, making short work of the Finn squad. PGS looking pretty good. Yeah, 90% of the time for uh, pistol saves for uh, the T side, if uh, they don't have a close respond, they're usually going to commit towards the upper side. And uh, PGS actually d decided that they were going to try to stack towards the upper side and uh, try to gamble it to prevent uh, Rocket from planting the bomb at the upper side. And it paid off for PGS. Uh, usually, if you're going to try to rush towards the uh, ram room area with the flashes, you're going to you're going to fly some flashes to say it flash inside the ram room and try to towards that area. This time, though, it's going to be a buy and surprise by for Rocket on the third round, gun round, and we've already got a two-on-one situation as I've missed the whole action. We've actually flashed through the squeaky door towards the upper side, blinded Luke, who's uh, currently standing at the small uh, the small entrance of the upper side, and then uh, they were trying to move in and plant that bomb, but a crossfire there set up by uh, Kuman, who moved in towards the upper of the ladder rafter. Uh, he got the pick off and the kill, and PGS gets the third round in a row of the second half, making it 11-7. Overall, still in favor of Rocket, who's looking... Uh, to score their first point on the second half. All right, uh, full buys here possible uh, for both teams now, so we should see our first full gun round. The Finns need to come in and uh, and uh, get around here if they want to throw PGS off their game, but PGS needs to counter. They are behind at the half, and uh, they need to come up huge right here. It looks like they are on a save. Yet again. So rather unexpected save here. Taz with two frags. Kuban B and Lord B both getting frags. And an easy round victory here for PGS as the Terrace opted not to buy here in the fourth round. Vance, tell me about that strategy. Yeah, well, like I said, they actually bought on the third round on a surprise buy with AKs and tried to go for an aggressive push towards the upper site. And by losing uh, all their players and getting no bomb plans, that's actually less money that you're going to win in the next round. So they're, they're doing a different strategy than PGS, which is usually a default strategy you would, you would do, is to save your all of your guns or save your money by not buying any guns and have a full gun in this round instead of trying to gamble with a mixed buy uh, 
who them are playing a very aggressive uh, push towards the random area, already running inside the lobby, dropping one, and then on the top of the roof, we had two guys from Rocket waiting on the top of that roof, dropping one. So we have a four and four situation, but I think we got some blue guys. Yes, indeed, we had BGS overtaking that lobby area, and they're gonna fall back towards the upper site. Rocket now pushing towards the outside, killing Luke, uh, courtesy of Tinty. As we have a four, uh, one man advantage in favor of the Finns. As now BGS is looking for some position and some crossfire uh, against the Finns, who they are going to decide to just hold back here on the outside and then flash towards the upper side, then to come in towards the upper side. But Taz now waiting on the top of the ladder, Neil as well. We now finally draw down Taz as we have a 2 on 2 situation. Make that a 2 on 1. Roar B was still on the rafters there, got the kill onto Ruit. So it's all up to Nasa with the bomb on his back. He's making his way inside the ladder as Lord B decides to push through the ramp with his teammate, Neo. As they're soon going to, no, they're not going to meet face. Nasa decides to go up that ladder, creep his way up on uh, that rafter. And uh, Lord B and Neo are actually pushing through the ramp room and they're going to try to flank themselves on the top of that ladder. If Nasa hurries they're up, he can make his, his way. Yeah, if he hurries up, he can make his way towards the lower site yeah. by breaking through the vents. But uh, he just didn't know where PGS were set up there on that D. And uh, he just spotted the enemies on the top. Actually, he never saw them. PGS just flanked them on the top of that ladder. And uh, Rocket lost that round. Yeah, that was a nice rotation there by PGS. Catching him off guard, getting his back. And uh, that's always an advantage with an FPS player is looking away from you, man. So uh, yeah. round score right now, 11-9 to 9 here. Uh, the Finns have yet to pick up one round on the T side. And PGS looks to keep this one going here. They're looking real strong on the CT side. Let's see what the entry uh, situation is going to be here. Looks like the terrorists are looking real hard at the ramp area to go to the lower side, possibly. Smoke's being stand in as well. Nasu makes his way in past the smokes. Now he's going to try to send a, uh, a flash towards the ramp room. There is opposition in this ramp room from the CTs. And they're going to have to try to work their way in. Nasu with a good look at that room. He's not sure where his opposition is. Let's switch it up. As there are a lot of T players outside, Lord D does have that squeaky door. Now first frag coming in from Nasu on Kuban B. Five on four situation now as the terrorists do have their job made easier about which way, which site to uh, plant at. And it looks like they are going to head down low, but a sweet frag coming in from Lord B. is going to send the bomb to the floor. And now the terrorists have to rotate to pick it up. Looks like Nasu is going to have to come around to the lobby to pick it up. CT players are uh, backing off of it. And the terrorists are going to pick it up on the outside. Oh, this is going to get hairy right here. Coming around this corner, it's going to get very interesting. Ooh, Tinty with some nice shooting right there. And the terrorists are going to take the round. Nice position from the CTs, but you know what? Superior shooting from the Finns ended up winning them the round. Yeah, good, good communication there by Finland as uh, they had a simultaneous peak all towards the upper side. Ten. PGS can really do nothing there towards uh, that defense. They had the last two guys. They, uh, they committed towards the right side. Uh, to try to defend, but Rocket just peeked inside the hut on top of that ladder and the rafter and also towards the small garage and PGS can hold it down. So good communication by Rocket playing the pickoff game earlier on that round would be a big advantage for them uh, to by the bomb sites. Uh, this round though, it seems as though it's going to be an aggressive play by PGS. Kuban is actually already pushed up on the top of their radio and they're flanked around that Rocket and drops uh, dropped Rocket as they're trying to make their way towards the ramp room area. Then he falls back inside the ramp room as we had action on the outside with Nino as well. So this, uh, the tide has turned in this round as uh, PGS is now into the advantage with the two-man situation. We're following now Blast A, with the, uh, which is the bomb carrier for a Rocket, making his way inside the radio room. He's going to go head-to-head -head, head -head against Kuban if he keeps making his way towards that area. And it could be looking good, but soon uh, Kuban is met up with Neo to try to defend the rain room area. Just spamming through that wall. That's going to force Blast a to just hold on his footsteps and maybe back pace and hold inside the radio. Now Plastic going to try to creep back in once again. He has 100 HP. We have 36 seconds left to work with on, on the clock. Kuban in the back of the, of the ramp room area behind those boxes looking at the ladder room. Neo cross-firing here as he pushed inside to help out his teammate. Plastic looked on the right, never saw him coming. I think he's going to walk into a trap. He then steps in. Headshot it from behind. A bomb is down. Content, a last man standing. Four on one situation, 21 HP. Kubin looks back towards that ladder room still and has spotted his opponent and picked him off. 
and PGS gets another round here. What's the overall score so far? We got PGS at 10 and Rocket at 12. Yeah, so two round difference here. Nice tight matchup. Exactly what PGS wanted to do. And uh, with the 11-4 score in the first half, I think they're doing pretty well here. 6-1. to one. They're on pace to do even better than the Finnish squad did on the CT side. So here's the hoping that they keep going for their sake. They need to do that or else they will be out. Luke with the first back of the bomb. Kerry Connie rushing in through the squeaky door. Now with a second. Cooper B chimes in with the third frag. Plaste finally getting the first frag uh, with a pistol out there. So it looks like Terrace was saving, and they yep. were. Uh, being down uh, six to one definitely doesn't help your money situation. And now it is seven to one as the CTs make short work of the uh, under armored Terrace players. At this rate, we might be able to see a third map, ladies and gentlemen. So. Uh... It's going to be uh, heated. It's going to be packed, and PGS is just trying to stay alive, though. We're going one round at a time for the for the Polans. As, uh, we'll see what's going to happen for Poland, should I say. As uh, We got the T's moving out towards the T spawn. We're probably going to try to work uh, up the pickoff game once again with Conte by himself on the outside. The rest of Rocket are uh, inside in the lobby area. A big spy for Rocket as well. A couple of them didn't have enough money, but the Lills. Aggressive play by PGS once again. They're all over the lobby room, but finally we're trying to even things up. Nasu finally makes it a two-on-two -two situation by dropping uh, Taz inside the squeaky door. So now Luke tries to chime in, manages to get that frag. It's all up to Conti by himself on the outside with the AK-47 making his way in under the ladder. He's going to go head-to-head -to, -head to Lord. No, he's going up the ladder. Lord is just behind, but he doesn't even, even need to flank. Luke was there by the left vent and picks him off long range to make it 8-1 to one on the second half. Overall score now, it's still getting closer and closer with uh, PGS at 12 and uh, Rocket at 12 as well. So they're actually all tied up once again, just like the last map. 12-12 to 12 is the score. PGS finally ties it up. And uh, they're on a better pace than the Finns were still with these uh, CT side victories. They're dominating the CT side right now, and they got to feel good about it. Now uh, we need to see Finland. I mean, they, there's not much variation in the tempo of these insertions here, and, and the PGS squad's starting to be able to predict what they're doing. Could be being Luke both with early frags right there. Five on three early. Neo gets another one. Now it's five on two. Lord B's going to do it. Also with the final two frags of the round, and PGS makes very very short work of that 10th round now it's nine to one and pgs has taken the lead in this map yeah so you can really see that these two teams are actually more performant on the ct side uh their strategies really really weren't working on both cases uh, on uh, on the first and second half when they were both playing the t side so we'll see what's going to happen though we might see uh, a third map if not at this point I'm probably going to say an overtime if, PG, if Rocket is able to get a couple of rounds. I don't think they're going to be able to win this one at the rate that PGS is playing with the inside. Lots of nades inside their, the hut, should I say now, is going to put Ruid down to 71 HP, who is trying to run inside that hut. Good thing he had a further spawn to the end of the round. Neo's going to open things up, though, onto Nas, who is going to come to move in towards the upper side. One, two, three down. Finally, Plaster retaliates with two kills himself. himself. Now we got nice. a two on two. Tinty then dropping one. Tinty then killed by Neil on the floor. Plasti now making it a one-on-one -on -one situation as he avenges his teammate. Wow. But then he tried to fall back through the squeaky door inside the lobby. But Kuming was there to flank, and PGS wins that round. I tell you what, brother, Plasti's got a killer crosshair there. You saw some nice, nice, quick crosshair shots from him. Uh, unfortunately, PGS just had the positional advantage uh, the whole time. You can see Kuben B leading score for PGS. 16 frags for him in this matchup. Scores 10 to 1 in the second half. Uh, the overall, the uh, overall score 14 to 12 now. As we are entering the tie point, PGS looks to win this map if they want to stay alive. Nasty with the first frag from the Finns though, He's gonna make it a power play outside. PGS stuck inside. Plastic with another frag. Now it's five on three, and the Finns looking pretty decent here. Uh, they're all still outside, however, and the CTs have the best position they possibly can with uh, Lord B inside the main side. Kubin at the ramp area. And Neo is up top, peeking outside and inside real quick, but he gets headshotted by Ruin. Now there's only two CT players left, and this could be a nice play by the Finns. Nasu going to chime in, and that is only going to leave one CT player left. That's Kubin. For the tears to work with, however. Bomb still outside. 
Got 35 seconds to figure it out. Kubin, man, he had the position to be able to squeak one in against Ruit, but uh, he wasn't. He didn't realize the bomb was still outside, I guess. Now the T's are going to ease their way inside. Plenty of time here. But they're going to have to make a move soon to get this plant. They're going to enter the top side of the upper side. Ruit's going to drop down, go for the plant. Let's switch it up and see if we can find the CT player. And Plaste is going to bust him outside as he peeks. So uh, that is the second round victory here for the Finns. And uh, and uh, they keep they keep PGS from reaching tie point. Yeah, I think what Kubin was just trying to do is uh, just hide inside that vent, see where uh, Rocky was going to attempt to plant that bomb, and just try to peek out and pick him off. But as uh, so they were planning to uh, go towards the upper side because he didn't see anybody go lower, with so little seconds to go, he knew that they were going to commit towards the upper side. So he went back up that vent. But he got uh, overpowered there with uh, positioning on the top ladder uh, from Rocket. So in this round, we have uh, what looks like to be an aggressive play by PGS. No, they're going to decide to fall back after a couple of flashes and nades into the lobby room. Lots of spamming going on here by Rocket as Tinty is going to get the opening kill onto Neo. I think he's on the garage on the outside indeed. And then he gets off down by Luke who's hopping from the CT boxes. So we've got a 4-on-4 four four situation now. Kubin, Taz, Lord B, and Luke for BGS against Conte, Ruit, Plaste, and Nasu for Team Rocket. Let's see what's going to happen. Nasu still has the bomb. They're going to fall back here. I think Plaste is jumping up on the top of the roof. Let me just quick over to him. Indeed he is. He's probably going to try to go for some uh, spamage here. Through the wall on the outside indeed to try to see if anybody is on the top of that hut. Also, we got some spamming on the top of the rafter uh, by his teammate, but nobody has picked up as of yet. we still got a 4 on 4 situation with 42 seconds to go. But with all that spamming, I think we're going to go for the upper site. Indeed we are. Here comes the flashes. The squeaky door has been closed though. That's going to prevent Rocket from coming back out. So then they run out one by one. Leaving the two guys remaining here for Team Rocket. Closing that squeaky door once again. The bomb has been dropped. Ruit going to work here from the hut, though. Dropping Lord B and Kubin. And he turns around while he was reloading. Saw Luke there trying to flank around. And he gets a nice shot. And another round here for a Team Rocket. Should give the overall score here. What is it, DJ Room? It's 14-14, uh, brother. They just tied it back up. And we're entering a tie point situation for uh, the victor of this round. Great. Let's, uh, let's uh, go ahead and pick it up here. Round 14 of the uh, of the second half here. Finns are on the T side. They're going to keep the uh, bomb outside. Conti way up front, peeking inside uh, that hut area right there. I don't think he saw much in the way of CT players. Uh, he's going to take it back outside, however. Let's see where the bomb ends up. Still on the ground, and PG has pushed way up front on defense. Ruit. He's going to headshot Neo outside. Plaste is going to pick up the bomb. M4 in hand. He's going to take it around the side outside. He's got plenty of support outside. Terrence looking to uh, work their way in that garage door entrance outside there. This is stressful, actually, because it's a mixed buy for PGS. Only one guy holding a ram room with an M4. The rest of the guys with Deagles and USP. So a big gamble for PGS. This is uh, win it or break it. 45 seconds remaining here in the round. Lord B with a huge headshot on Ruud, who was peeking in the squeaky door. Now he's even more ready, as it is four on four now. Maintaining control of the top side are the CTs. Terrace all stacked up outside. Oh, check out that boost. And, uh, yeah, they're boosting right now up top. Let's see how many guys they could fit up. They're trying to go for that double jump there and try to get on our roof, and then they're going to boost that guy up on the top of that vent. I've never seen this before. And they both jump miscommunication. I hope Ten there's seconds a, left, man. Yeah, I hope hey, there was no footsteps on? there, and I think it was. Yeah. All right, rush in. Get this plant down. They got five seconds to plant. Plasti is trying to get it down. Let's see if he can. Oh, right at the nick of time. He got it planted. However, wow. Kubin B busts him just as the plant went down when time expired in the round, and he's going to be able to get it a super easy to fuse here, and that is going to be a, another round tally here for the counter-terrorists of PGS. Yeah, sorry for cutting you out on that part there, DJ Rome. That was actually very interesting with that boost up there, but we saw that miscommunication as they were both jumping up and down. I guess they were a little bit stressed out on the remaining time, and I think there was one or, foot, one or two footsteps that, uh, that were heard by Lord, who was just holding on the top of that ladder, so he pre-fired and got, a, got one kill. Rocket almost could have won that round, but that slight miscommunication just cost it that round. At least they got the plan, though, and they're going to play for the overtime. We're at 15-14 overall so far in favor of BGS. Rocket looking to win this round to bring it to overtime. And looking at it so far, I'm just quickly, uh, kick, clicking quickly as uh, BGS 
has Famasis and M4, so they bought whatever they could, of course, but uh, they still didn't have enough money to uh, bring it to a tie. So let's see what's going to happen, should I say. I just chuckled a bit because uh, Nasu already gave up as he died on the outside. And in a three-on-two situation, Rocket could still pull this out. I don't know why he's given up already, but Ruit still has the ball on his back. They could still pull this off. He's running back inside the hut area, getting ready to run out. Plasti even things up in a two-on-two -two situation. And we're going to get a successful plan as well for Ruit of Rocket. Now we're going to need on the top. Luke has six HP. One flash, partially blinded. He's gonna run out. He has six health. He gets popped by plastic, should I say. Neo's gonna be the last man standing. Gonna go, gonna try to go for the clutch. He then spans through the wall, takes Druid down. Then he's gonna go for the Formasa chase outside, oh. but he gets picked off by Plaste, And we are going to overtime with a 15-15 score overall. And that, Nasu, you're a bad boy. Why did you say good game? Just it's have faith uh, in your teammates, bro. You know what? It's about time I saw a tense moment in this matchup. That was about <laughs> on the edge of the seat as I've yeah. been during this matchup. And, uh, yeah, tell me about some overtime rules there, Vance. Well, overtime rules, how it's going to work out. You're going to start out with $10,000. If I'm not mistaken, it is three rounds per half. So uh, first one to four will be able to win the matchup. And uh, this is it. I mean, PGS, if they're able to win this overtime, is going to go through a third map. But if Rocket wins this, it is game over for PGS. So the pressure is on for both teams still. I know Rocket... Uh, doesn't want to bring this to a third map. They want to win this ASAP, ASAP as soon as possible because uh, they got more matches to play. They need to recuperate, need to uh, actually rest. As PGS, they're still swing their, uh, you know, junk off because uh, <laughs> it's intense so far. All right. Well, overtime's <laughs> coming up after this. You guys sit tight. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back right now. It is live on three overtime. D Nuke between Rocket and BGS. We have tied it up. Nope. We're going to cancel it now. Nope. What? Hey. Thank you, hey Pentagram, for oh. screwing me over. So current set is canceled. We're just going to wait once again for another live on three. So, uh, see we'll, you in a bit. uh, yeah. Yeah. Peace. Peace. We'll, uh, pick it up yeah. when they're actually yeah. ready. Sight. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's overtime. Not.
All right, we're going to resume right now. We are live on three, hopefully, between PGS and Rocket. Once again, this is overtime. Best out of three per half. Or should I say three rounds per half? And you start with $10,000. Rocket on the T side, the disadvantage side so far. We've witnessed the whole matchup. It is Ruin Conte Tinti, Lasse and Nasu against BGS Lord, Neo, Taz, Luke, and Kubin. As they're following Tinti with the rest of, oh, Team Rocket as we get a nice back to the wall. Nasu going at the double kill him to Lord B and Taz. Give a big advantage for Rocket right now on the T side. We're coming in towards you after sight now. We're plastering on the top of the ladder as well. Ruin is on the outside going one on one. Finally takes down Luke. Last man standing is going to be Kubin on a five versus one. Bomb has not been planted as of yet. We're still battling this right now. Kubin was actually on the lower side. Goes to the vent, takes down Conte who's trying to drop down. Bomb has finally been planted. We got a smoke down towards the left vent. To try to prevent uh, Rocket from looking down. I think he's just going to fall back and save his gun. On a 4v1, Ruin's on the hunt, though. He's going to just wait, open a sliding door to the dead room, and going to try to flank across. Blasty and the rest of uh, Rocket are flanking down and going to try to corner uh, Kubin. Kubin finally spots Ruin, picks him off inside of the dead room. He has 36 HP. He's probably going to try to open that sliding door and run towards the outside. No, he's going to fake that one. Bomb is going to go off. And a much needed first round here on the T side, won by Team Rocket with two more rounds to go and overtime in the first half. You know, both these teams have their hands full with one another, and it doesn't seem like one team has a chance to get much of a streak going. It's like five round, five round, a few rounds here or there for each team in a row. And we've been watching the money just change hands and, and the momentum swing left and right. I can't believe PGS allowed this overtime to happen, though. And they've got to be fired up. To, uh, to gain some victory here. I thought the door was open for them. Now, quick quick rush strat here from the tees into the upper side. Lord B gets a first frag, though, but Ruin's going to get nice. two from down low. From the backside, Neo comes in, blazing that M4, though, and Ruin goes down. Bomb carrier gets dropped by some CT players. Connie's there to pick it back up, though, and the pistols come out from Kube in short range, and that's going to be the first round victory for the CTs there with uh, with, with a pistol, brother. Yeah, good round there for PGS. I thought that uh, the fake was actually going to work by pushing three guys on the upper side. I think before having the fake to black screen for one of the PGS, he said, I didn't see no bomb. So uh, one of the guys just stayed down towards that vent. One guy inside the ram room saw that rocket was moving in with that bomb and uh, preventing that plant, even prevent, prevent the victory here for the Finns. Technically, this should be the last round of the first half of overtime in this next round three. As we're working on the outside once again, it's going to be a full gun round, of course, as we're moving towards the upper site. And we spot it here as we're dropping two uh, for, our, for uh, PGS and uh, two, three. Make that three for PGS and two for Rocket now. So we've got a three-on-two situation. Make that a two-on-two as Kubin kills Ruit. We got Nasu now on the outside with only 9 HP making his way towards that ladder. He's soon going to be met up with one of the CT guys. I don't think he saw him. He's going to peek up. Kubin there finally picks him off. And Conte is going to be the last one remaining. Hopping out that, that uh, window of the hut. He's going to go down towards the lower vent. He's going to break that vent open. Indeed he will. And as he breaks it up, didn't notice that Taz is right behind him. And he gets killed, and that's going to end the first half. Two to one in favor of PGS on the CT side. And, you know, winning one round on T side could actually be pretty good on a T side, um, on a CT side of maps such as Nuke. So uh, the way that uh, Rocket has been playing on the first half, though, when they were playing as uh, CTs, I, mean, I think it might be coming in their favor. You know, it's really interesting that you say that, Vance, because I completely agree. When you start with all the cash like that, uh, you really need to be extremely strong on the CT side. So now it's up to the Finns uh, to take this one down. And if they're able to do that, then they will move on and advance. So we'll see how hungry these guys are in the round. Doesn't appear to be live yet, so uh, we'll pick it back up when it goes live here in the second half. Vance, do you have any uh, any thoughts here as to uh, what, what the Finns are going to do uh, to... Handle the CT side, maybe not give up a round? Well, I mean, you start with $10,000 here as the CT side. I think what uh, Rocket's going to do again is maybe go with their interesting strategies uh, by pushing the two guys at the lower vent. It's worked out for uh, a, couple of, uh, a couple of gun rounds and uh, overpowered PGS with the takeovers. I don't know. It all depends on the spawn, I guess, once they're going to start off on the second half. If they have the closer spawns, I think they're going to play the takeover uh, like they did a couple of rounds there. So uh, it's going to be an interesting second half uh, of the overtime, no matter what. And PGS is actually uh, on the brink of elimination here. If they lose two rounds in uh, this half, they actually lose the game and get eliminated because they lost the first map against the Finns 16-14 on GE Train. 
So, uh, Rocket, the, with the comeback and the tie, I mean, they got the momentum now, especially winning, like I said, that uh, first round in the first half as T-side with an amazing push. And a great, amazing play, I got to say, for Nasu because spamming through that wall, dropping the gun on that floor, that gave a huge advantage for Rocket to move in. Just hanging out for these players to ready up here for the second half of the overtime. Looks like uh, the PGS squad kind of stepped back a little bit, and they're going to uh, regroup here. Pretty sure they're huddling right now inside the attorney uh, area. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they are. Uh, they're going to discuss some things because, as you mentioned, Vans, it is, it is two rounds from victory for the Finns, and it's two rounds for, uh, from advancement. So uh, PGS does have some planning to do. they got some discussion to have. And uh, they're going to try to come up with a couple of good plays here for the uh, second half of overtime. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people are expecting this kind of uh, close game for uh, this matchup between the Finns and Poland. Like I said, I mean, uh, PGS and Fnatic were the, uh, the all-time favorites for this tournament. Especially, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Neil winning that uh, Gamer of the Year award. Uh, Poland was going to have a better chance here to perform uh, here at the World Cyber Games Grand Finals for Counter-Strike 1.6. But... PG, uh, should I say Rocket, as a whole, as a team, were just able to dominate and just play a very close game against PGS. I even got to say, if I'm not mistaken, on the CT side pass, they even dropped a, a two bomb, which is getting more than 20 points uh, on the CT side against PGS. So, you know, Rocket, they're uh, overshadowed, should I say, so far by PGS, but we're really seeing them uh, enlightened uh, with the way that they're playing so far. All right, PGS back at their computers now. And they have just uh, switched sides here. So we've got, um, hopefully, an impending ready for these teams. And we'll be able to take this uh, to a conclusion here shortly. Yep. PGS seems, uh, <laughs> seems like they're fairly ready to go. Neo's uh, in the server playing right now. Kuban's in there also. The Finns have been playing the whole time. They, they look like they're, they look and sound like they're ready. Here we go. All right. Both teams are now ready, Vance. Why don't you drop us into the first round of the second half of overtime where the finish have the advantage. That's right. PGS starting off on the T side now on D. Nuke. It is Lord Neil, Taz, Luke, and Kuban once again against Ruit, Conte, Tinti, Plasse, and Nasu of Rocket on the CT side. We start with $10,000. It's going to be a full gun round here for both teams. I haven't seen any hopping going on for uh, either team so far on Nuke except for that miss by uh, with Nasu with the auto sniper uh, when he was playing on the CT side. Uh, so it's going to be an all rifle game here. There you go. We see how that lower side can break open that vent or creeping slowly down towards that lower vent. And I think they're going to play the takeover here. So uh, let's see what's going to happen. I'm looking at the overhead. Uh, we got two guys from PGS on the outside. Three guys inside the lobby just uh, holding it slow. As uh, now we got the Nasu and Conte combo uh, in uh, each vent. While Neo actually got dropped by Ruid from the top of that ladder. Uh, so I guess Rocket is very well set up here for uh, the coverage or takeover of either box sites, upper or lower. So let's just see what uh, PGS is going to attempt to do. Ruit decides to work towards the outside and picks off Luke at the red box. So the rest of PGS are just going to attempt to bring this dude to squeaky door. Flashes all over the site. Running in. Nobody there. Opens the vent. Surprise! Conte gets the kill into Kuman. We're going to try to open the other man. Surprise! But Nasu then gets killed by Lord B. Four on two situation now. Make that a three on two. We're going to try to stay alive here at the upper site. Now Lord B, the last man standing, is going to drop down towards the lower. Eight health against three guys of Rocket. It is Ruit, Conte, and Plaste. And good luck to Lord B. Now draws a headshot onto Conte inside that right vent. Opens the other sliding door. Ruit moves down that vent. Plaste on the other vent. So good positioning here by Lord B so far. But uh, I would have chosen the other vent because now he's going to be attacked here from the sliding door and also from the window. Now there's a smoke there, so he's going to have to try to just spam to the wall. Ah, uh, he just got this. He never saw the uh, he never saw the positioning by Root. Uh, like Root went for that fake defuse and then stopped, switched over to the, uh, just moved, tossed himself on the side a bit, and then the Lord B never saw that through the smoke. And finally, as the smoke slightly cleared up, finally saw the silhouette of Root. But it was too little, too late, and Rocket got that defuse, and that's a great round. One round from victory here for Team Rocket PGS. It's do or die time, gentlemen. Uh, you're gonna have to move in. And do something serious here. Three guys from the terrace side are uh, in the uh, headed towards the uh, lobby. The two that went towards the ramp got taken down already, so it's five on three. As Team Rocket 
starts off what could be the final round with a nice start. Luke takes it to a four on three here with a frag on Ruit. And Lord B, bomb carrier inside the hut, has yet to commit to the upper side, but he really wants it bad, and he's checking around. He does see a teammate already in there. Good thing he didn't peek all the way out there as he took a little wall spam. Conti control at the top side, drops Luke on his way in. He sees the hut, he's firing on the hut. Drops Lord B, Kubit B those in. And takes down Connie. However, it's just Kubin versus the world and the finish are inches away. Just one frag away from advancement. Kubin keeps PGS alive with a frag on Plasti though. And that's gonna leave 2v1. Kubin makes a move for the bomb. He's got that picked up. Let's see positions on the CT players. Bottom of the ladder for both players. Now they're gonna storm in. Kubin drops Tinty. Nice. 1v1 here. This could be huge as Nasu seals the victory for the Finns. Vans? Actually, actually, I don't think it's a victory so it's far. No, because we actually had a 2-1 score in the first half for PGS. So overall now we got three, uh, should I say, three for Rocket now and uh, two for PGS. So PGS, this is a They need one more. Yeah, so if PGS wins this one, we're going to double overtime. And if Rocket wins this one, uh, they seal the victory. My bad. It's all good. <laughs> So let's see what's going to happen now at the overhead. We got BGS, full guns, of course. Uh, they're going to drop the bomb intentionally at the entrance of uh, the T-spawn. And they're going to play the pickoff game once again with Neo and Luke on the outside. Hopefully this is going to pay off. We got Conte at the red box on the CT side. Let's see what's going to happen on the outside now. We got uh, Kubin just spamming on the top of the roof, trying to see if anybody's on the top of that ladder. C could he uh, connect to Ruit? Uh, let me just see if Ruin is at that position. Indeed he was. He got picked off by Neo there. Neo is slowly making his way towards the outside, but I don't think he knows that Conte was waiting at that CT red box. And finally he gets taken. Now we got a 4-on-4 four four situation now. PGS, the rest, of, the rest of the guys are holding here by their radio room. I think we're going to try to work here towards the ramp room area. Uh, let's quickly look now at the overhead. Back into the game. Luke, I think Luke is just holding on the outside. Indeed, he is. The rest of the guys decides to come back here inside the lobby area as Plastic drops Lord. And Kubin now. The bomb carry just by the sweet door. Spotted an enemy there with help from Taz. They both take down Plastic. And they, oh man, I think we got our two on one. Indeed, we do. Kubin's going to be the last one remaining with the bomb on his back. He gets picked off by Conte. And that's going to be end of the, the end of the fight. Now Rocket wins against BGS and eliminates them and advances to the second round of single elimination. Congratulations to them. And BGS, another favorite here for the World Cyber Games. Another upset. And they are out. Well, we called it early, but they managed to win the game twice here uh, in overtime. Got a little bit uh, got a little bit tight there for a while, Vans, but uh, you know what? I think the better shooting team did come out victorious in this matchup, and uh, I think uh, I think what we've heard is right. The PGS not quite on top of their game right now. That's right. They uh, they really weren't. Maybe they were playing their 110 percent, or maybe they're at a slot moment right now. But uh, you know, they've lost in a group play against Virtus Pro. Now they're losing in single elimination uh, by advancing as a second place finish in their group, and uh, I guess it didn't pay off. And um, they're now eliminated, and Rocket advances. So with that, though, we're just going to sign off here. Van Silly and DJ Rome for GG Award live at the World Cyber Games 2007 in Seattle, Washington. See you soon for some more Counter-Strike matches.